Badger fans, let's talk about one of my five favorite players in this recruiting class. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans, as we continue to break down every player in this recruiting class? I am so thankful that you are here for it. Uh, let's talk about one of my – so quick side note, quick side story. I had somebody um, today on signing day, depending on when you listen to this, but on signing day reach out to me and say, hey, who are your five, five favorite players in this class? All, all things being equal, whatever. Whatever criteria you want to use, this was one of them. I, I'll probably do a show on this as well, who, who my five favorites are. But Anelu Lafayette is one of my five favorites. He is awesome. Um, so two, four, seven, four star, uh, three star across the board everywhere else. Two, four, seven is a high one on him. Edge defender, kind of outside linebacker type player out of Honolulu. Who I played at Farrington this last year, six, two, about two thirty five, two thirty. Uh, strong offer list, right? Oklahoma was in on him. A lot of PAC 12 schools, Notre Dame, BYU, definitely an in-demand player. Let's talk about the three things I like about Lafayette. Uh, and I don't have film on him. He's the only guy in here I don't have huddle film on because when I went to his huddle page, it was no longer there. I did find film on him, but it wasn't film I felt that I could use, copyrighted and whatnot. So I paid for the huddle film. Um, so anyway, three things I like about him. The first one, and anyway, I talked about this uh, during the show with Dylan Jones, Dylan Johnson. He's a position of need guy, right? Like, like that's the first thing. Like you can. You can get, and we ran into this a little bit in previous recruiting classes. You can get all the offensive tackles you want, but you can only play two of them. Like, you need edge guys on this team. There is a desperate need, a dearth of playmakers off the edge, a dearth of, of guys who can go and create havoc, who can cause headaches for offensive tackles, who keep defensive coordinators out that night. Lafayette can fit that projection. Now, again, all this is projection. All recruiting is his projection. Is he going to do that or not? We don't know, but he has the physical tools to do that. It is in huge position to need. Number two, I love how he's wired. Like I, I was able to get him on the show in this summer. He is wired correctly for a defense. You could like the intensity in him. He all he wants is is to be great in Madison to work. You can talk to him just for five minutes and pick up on that. So he's wired like a defensive player. I really enjoyed my conversation with him. That's one of the favorite guys I've had a talk, chance to talk to. Um, and the third thing I like is the athletic tools. Right, he is a compact, explosive athlete in space. You know, when you go to play the Ohio States, when you go to play the teams that are going to spread you out and say, our athlete is going to beat your athlete in space. You need a guy like this. You, you need multi, you need a couple of guys like this, right? Let's let's be clear. And again, it's all projection, but you need guys with the physical abilities that Lafayette has. In space, he's really good. He closes quickly, um, explodes through contact. He's not the biggest guy, but very physical. When he hits people, they go backwards. It is a really violent player in space for his size. And then from a pass rushing standpoint, he, he explodes off the edge. Um, he's, he's not quite Nick Herbig. Uh, that, that's the obvious comp. Um, relatively similar sizes. Herbig just has a little bit more of a, a twitch in him than Lafayette has, in my opinion. I could be wrong on that. But I, Lafayette isn't that far behind. And I think he might even be a little... He's probably just as advanced coming out. Like, he has really good hand usage. Um, he'll He'll kind of strike on the offensive tackle, rip his hands through, get his hands off, get around the edge. And those aren't the plays where he's touched. There's a couple of plays where that explosion off the edge is so quick that he outruns it. The offensive tackle can't even get a hand on him. He has that type of explosion, that type of acceleration off the edge, the ability to cause disruption. That's his game, right? He can get inside tackles with the kind of stepped outside move and swim back inside. He's a really, really disruptive edge player. Um, I think he's going to play next year. <clears throat> But I think he is that ready to go that he's going to be a little like Nick Herbig where they can plug and play him in certain situations. Again, I don't think he's quite Herbig on the Twitch side, but everything else, I think, including the way he's wired, I think kind of checks out and stacks up with it. Um, offer list is really good. Again, we talk about those recruiting things. We look at, look at does he check these boxes? He, he checks the recruiting offer list box, some really high profile programs. Programs with a ton of pedigree after them, the Notre Dames, the Oklahomas, Utah, BYU, other Pac-12 schools. So that checks that box. Does he have the athletic tools? Yep, he checks that box. Does the film play? Yeah. Go watch film on him. Uh, it is an explosive athlete in space. He checks that box. This is one of my favorite guys in the class for a reason. Now, the other thing that's kind of nice about this one, the previous Badger staff was in on Lafayette, right? And one thing that previous Badger staff did – 
Jim Leonard, Bobby April. You remember those guys? Yeah, it seems like forever ago, right? One thing those those guys did so well is evaluate edge players. Like think of the linebackers that they brought in that, that Bobby April was in on. You know, um, they like this guy. And then this new staff, Fickle, Trestle, they like this guy. So you have a lot of people that I have a lot of respect for in the coaching profession who I think know what they're doing. All liked Lafayette, all wanted him on board. So I think it's a big get. Again, a two four seven four star player. Explosive athlete on the edge fits a big position of need on the team. One of my five favorite guys in this class and somebody I expect to play very early, probably next year. Anello Lafayette. All right, let's turn it over to some of the guys, some of the recruiting analysts who are more on uh, Lafayette, and we'll talk to you on the next recruit. Today's episode is brought to you by our good friends over at LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the five-star recruiting site. It's the number one place to find all of your talent. We talk about recruiting a lot on this site. LinkedIn does that on the professional side. They find the right people for your team faster, more efficiently. And if you're doing things faster, more efficiently, what do you do in business people? You're saving money, right? That's what LinkedIn is here to do for all of us. Make our lives easier. Make your hiring manager's jobs easier. They find the right people faster, right? They don't let the people have no business with they have screening tools and questions to keep the people have no business coming into your job interview away from your desk, away from your time, away from your calendar. They are incredible. It's something I use personally to continue to expand my network. It's something my company uses to hire quicker and more professionally. Right now, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash college. That's LinkedIn.com slash college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. They are the five-star recruiting and hiring site. Today's episode is also brought to you by our great friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel's awesome. Everything you want in a sports book, right? You want teasers? You got teasers. You want parlays? You got parlays. More parlays than you could parlay. You want future spreads. It's all there with every sport you can imagine and think of. FanDuel is where I go to do all of my betting because it's easy. It's fast. The payouts are simple. How many of us have won um, one of those kind of weird betting sites and you can't figure out how to get your money? FanDuel makes that easy. You get your money quickly. It's incredibly fun. I bet on all my teams. Y'all know it. Niners, Suns, Braves. Some work better than others, you know, but I have fun with it. And FanDuel allows me to enjoy that aspect of it easier and simpler and quicker and get those payouts when I do win. It is the fastest, easiest site to use. Um, and it is the official sports betting partner of the NFL. Right now, there's a great offer. Right now, new customers with a winning $5 money line bet get a $150 bonus bet. That's a winning $5 money line bet. You get a $150 bonus bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash College. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the NFL. John, I want to talk another, and this is one we were talking offline a little bit. There's an interesting pipeline. I don't know how much you can use the word pipeline in today's recruiting world, but yeah. Wisconsin has kind of tapped into um, the Hawaiian powerhouse, St. Louis High School. They're they're after another edge defender there. Obviously, that's where Tretch Kekahuna originally was from. Nick Herbig's from there, uh, powerhouse school. And now they're after, I'm going to try this name, Anele Lafele. La, 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 uh, I, I, I'm mispronouncing it. You tell me where it is, but... <laughs> edge defender, um, a lot of burst off the line, four star, three star type player, really another in demand guy. Where are we at on his film and his recruitment? Yeah, Anelu Lafaele is uh, a really interesting modern player. I mean, an edge guy who isn't the size and frame that Lindstrom presents. He's the converse of that. 6'3, 235, 240 or so. Uh, man. Uh, just a flasher, a guy who really jumps off the tape with his energy, his get off. He is that leverage guy and, and the quickness type of winner off the edge. Um, two point stance, three. We saw four point stance on his tape as well. A, a lot of get off. The line of scrimmage is, is where he wins quite literally here. Um, and he's another one where the recruitment is is picking up here pretty quickly. And, and this pipeline is, is fascinating to look into because Wisconsin has been there forever in his recruitment, dating back to the previous staff. He took a November unofficial visit across, you know, across the Pacific, across the, the Pacific time zone into the Midwest. And he saw Madison. He loved it. He called it a vibe. And, you know, the new staff took over and, and that offer was reaffirmed. And that relationship has continued uh, and been furthered, obviously, in between Tretch, uh, committed, decommitted, and then signed with Wisconsin anyway. Um, and, and this was obviously a big factor in, in this potential pipeline here going forward to the point where 
There's only two official visits on on the books right now for Fialele, and right now Wisconsin is the first one. The first weekend of June, we mentioned that spring portal window wraps up mid-May. Boom, turn to the official visits in the month of June and start to pick up commitments. Uh, and now he's going to make his return trip uh, to Madison. Uh, that's La Faele, I should say, and making his return trip to Madison. So you want the first or the last. We've talked about this a lot from an official visit perspective. Um, and I think what's interesting here is you're not now, you're not selling Madison anymore. He's already been there, done that. He was in town for the Maryland game last year. I believe it was one of the colder games of the season. So he got that game experience and, and the, the city experience on that trip because you're not flying in from Hawaii and staying for just a couple of hours like some of the local recruits can. You're staying multiple days. And then obviously now it's, it's about the staff. Uh, you don't need a tour of Madison or, or Camp Randall, all that stuff. You've done that. You'll, you'll still get it. But it's not as important. It's, it's going to be about sitting down with the current coaching staff, reconnecting with Tretch and, and the rest of the roster and kind of going from there. But but like you said, uh, another one who is emerging. Uh, Notre Dame's on there. They're getting the second official visit. He's trying to set up more trips. You know the Pac-12 programs are clamoring for him. He's in technically in that footprint. Uh, so naturally, you know, a lot of those schools are going to pop up and down his list. Uh, you wonder, you know, is this a UCLA, USC kind of deal? Does Oregon get involved uh, at a higher degree? All of those are potentially on the table. But if you look at what he has done, this offseason, he said he's 15 pounds bigger. Uh, and I saw some camp clips of him over the last few weeks. He still looks really good, really quick. You know, he, he's, he's not lost that calling card while trying to bulk up and, and play at, you know, 240 or so. So his stock is, I think, still very much on the way up. So you could look at it one of two ways, Ryan. You could say, hey, the schools that we're in before the blow up are going to get the benefit of the doubt. Wisconsin would be one of those schools. Or you say, hey, you know, everybody's an option no matter when they come in, but Wisconsin's already got an official visit set. And it was the first one that was set. I believe the Notre Dame trip just got set. So again, this Wisconsin interest is very tangible. It's being reciprocated both by what he says and, and certainly by what he's planning to do. And, you know, one of the things with Lafayette too, you watch the film and you can envision him in space. There's clips of him covering the flat, right? We talked about the, the flashiness. Like there's plays he just runs around the tackle and bangs the quarterback, but he can get in the flat. He can cover. He feels like a switch Swiss army knife type of, of a, a versatile defender that you need in today's college game. You need that against Ohio state and Michigan. A hundred percent. Right. Can, can you wall off one of these athletic tight ends uh, or running backs or slot receivers as much as you can come downhill and wreak havoc on, on the quarterback. And I think with him, that answer is yes. The lateral ability is really strong here, plays very square and well, you know, while he's working downhill towards the football, which maybe can lend into some, you know, underneath zone principles from a coverage standpoint. So I think there's a nice foundation here, an athletic foundation. Uh, and look, you know, coming up in Hawaii, these kids play all over the place. Uh, there's some offense in there. Um, you know, there's more spatial awareness in his game already than you know, his, his size and maybe position would, would otherwise suggest. So I really like this kid. And he's one of those that the more you watch him, the more you will inevitably like him. And if he continues to put on good weight and maintain that, I would say truly you know, elite quickness, you know, he's going to be a problem in this day and age because you can be a modern edge rusher at 245, 250 and wreak havoc. I mean, look at, obviously at the, at the top, you know, Will Anderson, you know, the, those type of players in college football are the hallmarks of, of the sport defensively. So obviously those are lofty names to compare him to, but you can live in that size and that frame and still do as much damage as, you know, your, your big physical Miles Garrett, you know, classic J.J. Watt style of, of defensive end or, or pass rusher.